What do you mean by de minimis tax rule? The de minimis tax rule establishes a threshold to determine when a bond purchased at a discount should be treated as a capital gain rather than ordinary income for tax purposes. According to the rule, if the discount is less than 0.25% of the bond's face value multiplied by the number of years between the purchase and maturity, it is deemed too small to be classified as a market discount and is instead taxed as a capital gain. The term de minimize comes from Latin, meaning about negligible things, reflecting its application to discounts that are considered too minor for taxation as ordinary income. This rule is primarily relevant for municipal bonds, where the tax treatment of the discount can significantly affect the bondholder's tax liability. If the bond is purchased at a small discount below the de minimize threshold, the bondholder will pay capital gains tax upon sale or maturity, which is typically lower than ordinary income tax. However, if the discount exceeds the de minimis limit, the bond's discount is taxed as ordinary income. To calculate the de minimis threshold, multiply the bond's face value by 0.25%, then by the number of years until maturity. For instance, if you have a $1,500 bond maturing in six years, the threshold calculation would be $1,500 times 0.0025 by 6 years equals $22.50. Subtracting this from the bond's face value. $1,500 to $22.50 equals $1,477.50 gives the de minimis threshold. If the bond is purchased for more than $1,477.50, any gain is taxed as a capital gain. If purchased for less, it is taxed as ordinary income. The de minimis tax rule also applies in other areas, such as fringe benefits and safe harbor provisions. Employers may provide small, infrequent benefits like snacks, gifts, or event tickets, which are exempt from taxation due to their minimal value. These de minimis fringe benefits are considered too trivial to warrant taxation or detailed accounting. For businesses, the de minimis rule is also significant in accounting decisions, particularly the choice between expensing or capitalizing costs. Under the de minimis safe harbor, companies can deduct certain small expenses from their income statements, reducing their taxable income. By expensing these costs, the company lowers its immediate tax burden, while capitalizing them would defer the cost by recognizing it as an asset, spreading out the expense over time through depreciation. This decision impacts both the firm's tax liability and its financial statements.